So before we get started on today's video, I just wanted to announce that the Fall River edition is now live and available in my web store. So there's a link in the description. If you're interested in purchasing one, you can click on that. It'll take you directly to it and act fast because there's only five available in this edition. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your support and enjoy the video. So very recently I moved into printing on fiber-based paper, which was kind of a scary ordeal for me because the only experience I had with it was based on things that I'd read on the internet. Fiber does uh, include some of its own unique characteristics that you have to adapt to. So starting with RC was definitely a good first step for me. Now print washing is a very crucial step when you're printing on fiber because unlike resin coated paper, all of the chemicals that you're using are actually permeating all of the fiber base of the paper. So you have to take great care uh, when you're developing in, in removing all of that chemical from the paper and that directly affects the uh, archival permanence of, of the fiber based paper. But back to the point of hand, print washing. I bought a print washer. This print washer I ordered from B&H and it cost me 30 or 40 dollars and it's just sort of a cheap Patterson style um, print washer. So this is what it came with. This is the tube that connected from, um, actually I've got the washer right here. So here's the washer. It's got all these little jets in it and it pushes water this way and it fills up this tray and it slowly dilutes the water down, removing you know the uh, fixer with it. So when it came to me, it came with this sort of hose plug. Um, I don't have a hose hookup in my house. <laughs> I live in an apartment. So I had to adapt and improvise to figure out how the heck am I gonna hook this thing up to anything in my house? Well, after a little bit of thinking and a couple of croissants, uh, there's a really good croissant place by my house, um, my wife and I, Jen, we figured out a solution. And that is one of these little bad boys. So this is a half inch, which is a standard connection for a shower head. So what we can do is we can connect this to the shower head and we'll connect the shower head back so that, you know, you can continue to clean your body and not be stinky. And then you can also hook up a, um, an extra line, which will be used for our print washer. So how do we connect a print washer to this? Well, we did a little bit of Home Depot finagling. And I bought just a, a section of half inch tubing. This is what came with the washer. If you buy the same one, you can just buy a half inch tubing. This came um, as this set, I think this is a 10 foot section, it was like $6. And then I bought two brass fittings. I don't remember exactly the ones that I bought, but you can just mess around with it a little bit. But you can see, let me get out of the way so you can see here. There's um, the half inch connection at the top, which will go into our diverter. And then I think this is a 3 eighths inside diameter, um, this guy which connects inside of the hose. And this is called a barb. And that barb can go inside of the tubing and then you can kind of clamp it all down with a, a little hose clamp. So let's go hook this thing up and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so step one, you need to remove your shower head and attach the um, diverter. So we'll go ahead and do that now. It's only one way that this can go on, so spin away, crank this down, nice, and then we'll reattach the shower head. So once the shower head is reattached, um, you can hook the half inch connection from the rubber hose um, onto the other side, and then that will lead down to the floor or the tub bottom. I think that should be tidy enough. 
And then we'll just um, hook now the half inch connection onto this. Now a little tip I've picked up along the way is don't hook the hose up to the wash until after you've hooked it onto this because the hose is going to need to spin and flip while you're screwing it on like that. So now you've got a sweet half inch hose hanging from your shower head that you can hook up to your print washer. Um, so I'll hook it, we'll, we'll change the view now so we'll hook it up to the washer so you can see what it is, but causing a huge mess. So yeah, let's hook this up to the washer and we'll make sure everything works right. All right, now we'll take the print washer, set him down in the bottom of the tub and we'll plug that hose into the inlet. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you've ever done Lego before, this is gonna be super easy. I'm just gonna turn the water on. Fired up. Oops, I didn't hook, I didn't divert the water yet, so it's coming out of the shower. Hang on. Alright, let's try that one more time. We have water. Sweet, glorious jet streams of water. How cool is that? You have a full-fledged like print washer in your apartment. And you can get water everywhere and it doesn't even matter because it's in your bathtub. So that's how that works. Now, I'm gonna take you back into the dark room and I'm going to spout off some facts that I just learned yesterday. Sweet. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, it's very easy, it's not very expensive, I think all in all. Um, 50 bucks, maybe 60 bucks with the washer included. So not a huge investment to get yourself one of the major steps when you start printing on fiber-based paper. Um, a couple things that I've just learned. Um, the temperature is very important to help aid with the process. So if you can keep your temperature somewhere between 68 and 70 degrees, a little bit on the warmer side, um, that will help to dissipate some of the fixer from the paper. And then also, do not be tempted to empty out the wash basin every time it's full because the, the relationship between the amount of fixer in the paper and the water level and the dilution between the two, um, it's more about reaching a nominal level rather than completely removing it um, from the paper. So don't be tempted to dump out the water from the basin. Just leave it and let it do its thing and um, you should be good. Uh, now with wash times, I've been doing um, 60 minutes for final washes, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. Um, the nice thing about having it hooked up to the shower head is that you can leave it in the tub and because of the way this print washer works, you're not using as much water as you might think that 60 uh, minutes would, would get rid of that much water. It's about because the, the water pressure is, is fairly low. So I would venture to say that it's maybe slightly more or less than the amount of water that you use when you take a shower. So after I wash the prints, um, I'll squeegee them right onto the shower wall just to get rid of the most, most of the excess water. And then I place them onto uh, a drying rack that I made with fiberglass screen and um, just some, some cheap wood. And uh, here in the next video or two, I'll show you how I make that. So. So that's how I wash prints in my dark room with no plumbing. Hopefully that's helpful for you, and I'll see you in the next one.